everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley and I'm an architect in Ontario and in this video, we're gonna be talking about what happens after you become a licensed architect in Canada. So once you meet those requirements, you need to maintain that license. And so we're gonna get into the details of what you need to do in order to maintain your license. So if you're interested, let's get started. After you get your license and you meet the requirements, you meet your education, experience, and examination, then you are basically a licensed architect. However, in order to maintain your license in Canada, you need to do the continuing education program. And this is specific to Ontario. So if you're in a different jurisdiction, make sure to check your association for the requirements. But in Ontario, you need to do the continuing education program and you have to meet the required amount of hours of, of structured learning and unstructured learning. And so similar to when you're an intern architect, you have to log in your experience and your hours well when you're an architect you have to log in your learning and as an architect you are always learning and it's a continuation and it's a journey of learning new topics learning the changes in the industry and so on so you have to log that experience in order to maintain your license. So we're gonna get into the specifics, what is structured learning, what is unstructured learning, how to log those hours, and what can you log under those categories. So let's get into it. The following are the program requirements for the continuing education program in Ontario. And here we have the Ontario Association of Architects, the website and information about the program and the program requirements. So the continuing education requirements, you need the following. As an architect, you need to have a total of 70 hours of learning. And out of that 70, 25 is structured learning and then the rest can be unstructured learning. And so non-practicing architects, you need 35 and there's no structured learning minimum required. So they could all be under unstructured or they can be split between. And then for licensed technologists uh, with the OEA, you need a total of 35 hours of learning, a minimum of 12 hours of that structured, it must be structured learning. So as an architect, you need to have a lot more hours. And of course, you could have a surplus of hours that can carry on to the following year. And remember, this is a yearly cycle. So you have to, in order to maintain your license, you need to meet these requirements every cycle. So every year you maintain it by the deadline. And so you gotta submit your experience, your learning hours, to the OAA and you can do that through their online system. There's a transcript similar to being an intern architect, you log in and you write a description about your experience. In this case, it's your learning hours and you log that and then the OAA will look at it and approve it and so on. So that's how it works. And again, I'm going through this process, so I thought I would share it with you as well. And if you do have questions, I always encourage you to get in touch with the OAA. I always get in touch with them if I have a particular question about something specific and they're able to really help you and navigate you through this. So since this is my first uh, login really for my continuing education program, I did have a lot of questions and of course you're always learning about the program and so on. But it is quite simple, it's not too complicated but in order to maintain your license, you do need to have 70 hours. And it looks like a lot. At first I was like, whoa, this is a lot, right? But it's not so bad um, because you're always, as an architect, you're always learning. So a lot of the things that you are already doing to learn and to improve your skills and so on, you are already doing it. So you're just logging that in. And then of course you're doing some more webinars and so on that then you would also record. So now let's get into each category. What exactly is structured hours and what is unstructured because they are different. So let's dive into structured hours first. For structured hours in comparison to unstructured, for structured hours, you need to show proof of attendance. So you need it like a certificate or something that shows that you attended that webinar or you attended those that learning session 
and you completed that and it would have your name on it, the title of the presentation or webinar, the total time, the date of completion, uh, the attendee's name, and then you provide a logo, the provider's logo and contact info should they need to get in touch with them. And so this is kind of a transcript. So when you would log that experience, you would include this certificate uh, that would show proof of attendance. So for structured, it really means that it's more structured. You gotta show proof of attendance. Unlike unstructured, you wouldn't show proof. So under structured, you have three categories. You have in-person learning. So this would include attendance in lectures, college or university courses, lunch and learn, and for this category the architect has no maximum so you could really put in a lot of hours in this category and then this would also include the second category which is distance education so this would include participation in webinars or online education modules or courses and there's no maximum for an architect in this category. And number three, there is the teaching category. So this would include public engagements in a professional capacity for the purpose of informing others. And so the architect could include 25 hours, non-practicing 13, licensed technologists 13 hours in this category. So this I found to be quite helpful just having this breakdown and just having that understanding of what are the maximums per category. And again, remember that structured hours, you need to show proof of attendance and unstructured, you don't. So now let's dive into unstructured hours. So here we have unstructured hours. So for unstructured, it encompasses all learning activities that as an architect, you may perform in a professional capacity. And so this one has a lot of different categories and there are some maximums that limit you per cycle, so per year. And again, for this category, you don't need to show proof of attendance. So you don't need to have like a formal certificate of some sort. You could include committee meetings. So as an architect, perhaps you attend committee meetings with the OEA or with the local society and you are a member of this organized group and you are part of those meetings and you take part on the activities, you could include as an architect 25 hours in this category. This also includes OAA council meetings. So if you attend OAA council meetings, you could include that in your unstructured hours. And there is a maximum of 30 hours and then for non-practicing 15 and then technologists 15. Now there's this maximum which you need to keep in mind for each category. So I think that's something to keep in mind. And then for discussion groups, you can also include that as unstructured hours. So if you're part of an organized group of individuals who gather to discuss specific topic, matter, or issue that is intended to support or advance the practice of architecture, you could include that. Now, this may also include lunch and learns, focus groups, guest speakers, and so on, roundtable discussions, and so on. And so that you would have a maximum of 25 hours in this category. And then for distance education, you could also include distance education. Now you'll take note that in structured hours, you could also include distance education. But again, the difference between structured and unstructured is structured, you don't need to show proof of attendance. And this category would include webinars, online education modules and courses, and this one has no maximum. And then you could also include in-person learning, and this includes college or university courses, lectures, lunch and learn, seminars, and workshops. No maximum in this category as well. Now mentoring. So you may have a mentor as an intern architect, so your mentors could actually include those hours as part of the continuing education program. This is a, in a way, this is a way of the OEA of encouraging architects to mentor the next generation. And so as architects, you, you could include a maximum of 10 hours, non-practicing five, and then technologies five. And then for teaching, teaching is also considered part of unstructured hours. So public speaking engagements done in a professional capacity for the purpose of informing others, teaching preparation is also eligible for unstructured learning, maximum of 25 hours in this category as architects. You can also include professional writing, multimedia, scholarly research, and tours. The OEA actually offers tours and you could 
could include that. So it's a participation of an organized and guided tour that supports or advances the practice of architecture. You could include that as well as part of your experience of your learning experience as an architect, maximum of 15. I want to go through the multimedia because this category, I think sometimes we miss this. And I actually, I think I also saw parts of it, but then when I reread it, I realized that I could be including a lot of my learning in this category. But multimedia includes listening to audiobooks, podcasts, watching documentaries, videos, reading books, journals. As an architect, we do a lot of this already. So anything related to the business of architecture, the practice of architecture within any of those multimedia elements, you could include that in your learning. And there's a maximum of 15 hours that you could include in this category. And then 18 from non-practicing and then eight for technologists. I think this is really helpful to have an understanding of what the program is about. And of course, if you got a lot of value out of the video, make sure to like the video. And if you'd like to support the channel, make sure to subscribe and you can do that here. If you would like to get more information about becoming an intern architect, you can watch this video here. I hope to see you on the next video. Until then, bye.